everybody, Stephanie here uh, for another Phoenix product related video. Today I'm going to do a small video about where we're at with the Phoenix networking project. I'll probably do a lot of these along the way and I thought today was a great day to do it because I've actually achieved myself. I mean, for the last two or three days I've been working on testing computers, installing Wi-Fi modules and um, I thought it was pretty exciting, so I said, you know, when I have five minutes, I'll make a video about it. So there, there it is. Uh, I have five minutes, so I'm going to make this video. So today, um, I don't want to spend too much time with the introduction. Um, so why am I always... Okay, so that's the one. So I happen to have a, a Phoenix uh, F256 Junior Rev uh, C here with me. This is a patron uh, unit that I've been repairing today because there was an issue with the FPGA, so I had to reball it, remove it, reball it, install it. I've been testing it, I've, I've upgraded it to the latest version. And so I wanted to show you two things that are important when you, inst when you install your Wi-Fi module. So I didn't install the Wi-Fi modules because now I'm offering the service to program them and install them because it was always an option for customers to install themselves. But I mean, should have come to no surprise that most people don't want to start fiddling with a uh, soldering iron. But um, yeah, so now I'm offering the service. If you want to buy the unit, you can actually have an option to purchase this. So I buy the module, I program it, and I install it. Um, and I test it as well. So you have, when you install, so if you're doing going to do yourself after it's programmed, you need to solder the thing. You don't need to solder all the pins. Um, specifically, you just need two solders, uh, like three or th four pins here, three or four there, and then three or four there. That's about, although you could do them all to make sure, but just saying. Um, most of them are not connected. So you have to change those jumper here because these are the TR TX and RX coming from this DR10 connector that is usually connected to a DB9 male to DR10, which is which means double row 10, and it's the same model. And uh, you connect it here, that would be your serial port. Normally, if you don't have a Wi Fi, the jumpers are in the other position, and this time they're on the upper part of the connector, so you're diverting back the RXDX back to the Wi Fi module. Now, the second thing you need to make sure of is that you set your dip switch three and four to on on the dip switch here, right? Um, in our case, we're going to, uh, for this, uh, for this um, presentation, if you will, I'm going to, I switch the dip switch one as well, which tells the kernel that if I'm downloading an application in the memory, it's going to look into the RAM memory for an application to execute. And um, Gadget, one of the member of the uh, community, which has been a very uh, pivotal to this um, endeavor because she actually wrote the kernel and she wrote the TCP IP stack inside the kernel and you know all the interface to deal with the Wi-Fi modules with the slip driver the slip core whatever um, she is the network person in the group she's our whiz so thank you gadget for all your hard work um, so actually she actually did all the like I said the TCP IP programming and she did also a small application that gets to talk to a um, to talk to a um, remote server uh, because we have um, Greg um, one member another member of our community that uh, offered to set up a server that server is based in UK so it's actually s set up now so what we're going to do now I just want to show you so after the Wi-Fi has been programmed installed the dip switches are on usually what you need to do so when you boot you're going to be in this um, screen um, usually you do slash DOS so you get into this DOS application and then you can do um, help to show you the different commands we can do and one of the commands is Wi-Fi so the only thing you need to do would be to Wi-Fi enter your SSD if there's no space in your here in your name just put your name and then the password if there's actually a space and you need to have the latest version of the kernel so you need to have RC5 and up you can put um, the, um, sorry, I have a blank, those things. <laughs> and you put your name SSD in there 
to get to be able to put some spaces in there right um, after it's done I'm not gonna do it because I would have to but let, let, let's assume it's programmed normally it's gonna say yeah if the communication works you're gonna say yeah connected uh, it says the program and then um, everything is resetted and ready to go and then fundamentally when there's no Wi-Fi SSD program inside there's a blue LED here that will be blue and it's always going to be blue till it actually is programmed. So when the if the SSD is connected properly with the right password, the LED will stay on for a little bit, maybe a few seconds, and then it's going to shut down it's because it's connected to your router. Okay, that means that you're ready to go. Obviously, if you're doing any communication, that the blue LED will be on and off as a like status connection status, right? All right. So let's assume that the Wi-Fi connectivity is done. That's the only thing you have to do now. Um, there's two things we can do. Well, there's only one thing. So you you, you can use, I'm going to use the um, the Phoenix ID. Uh, actually, this that's the, F2, the, the F256 down uploader. I'm going to, I'm on COM58 because I'm connected here with the cable, uh, that thing here, you know, the USB cable in the front. This is the background debug mode that you can upload your code in there if you didn't know about it. There's also a Python script that can be ran, run inside Windows and all the other computers or all other OSs. So I connect. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to go and get... Uh, you're not seeing it, which is great. I renamed it. There's a project. I'll put the link in the description. Um, this is the source code for a, a small example to connect. And um, this thing I'm going to put at 2000 in the memory. Oops, I didn't put the, I didn't use the right keyboard. So 2000, and then I'm going to send it in. And what it should do, it's to start the application right away. So you see, this is a small application that we have. This, it's open source. It's there for people to start using. So right now, the only thing I need to do is to press enter, and it should connect. There you go. Establish now. Basically, I'm connected with the server in UK, and the only thing it does is just echo back what I'm writing. So I'm going to write something that is very typical. So if the connection didn't work, I wouldn't be able to read what I just wrote. Um, it seems that there's nobody online because uh, me and Gadget actually started having a conversation and then at some point we were three people. That was really interesting. Um, so I'm not going to stick around too much because I don't want to start a new conversation with somebody else. But yeah, so this is where we are right now. Um, so at this point, I'm just going to um, distract you by uh, playing a game <laughs> to show you that there's actually games on the platform. And I'm going to start it so you can see it. Uh, I switched from Flash to RAM. And now I need to reset it and it should boot. Is it gonna Oh no, that's that's true. That's the the, the, the it's the jumper. I need to change the jumper on the phone. I always forget. Alright. Come on. There you go. So I am my justic here and then I'm gonna start. Hey, oh I'm not connected. The my joystick is not connected. <laughs> I just want to make it interesting. Look. All right. Of course. All right. So let's play. So <laughs> you see, this is how interesting it is to watch the video all the way. Yeah, I, I suck at it because I need to look at you <laughs> and play. All right. So that's it, guys. Um, that's all I wanted to show you. I'm going to shut it down. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> all right, guys. So this is where we at. So there is a little bit of code exists. The server is there. I think, like I said, the, I, I think the goal right now is just to get people connected. We're still very early on. There will be more people coming in, coming in. Uh, in the upcoming weeks because there are more units coming out more the bigger machine people will start connecting as well so uh, my goal is to get by by Christmas time maybe 20 30 40 people online um, and I guess the server will uh, evolve 
I think we're looking forward to do a, some kind of um, chat channel first, like we're going to talk to each other, uh, something simple. Um, yeah, so that's going to be cool. So hopefully you're going to join in. Uh, the, the, the junior is very cheap if you don't add one. It's a low entry level. That's the entry level in the, in the family, if you will. Uh, these I make on regular basis, so there's no like a three months waiting time. I mean, it could be three, three or four weeks, but it's usually not two or three months. So uh, I'm about to make another batch now. So if you want to place an order, that's great. Now, um, YouTube's people, maker, creators always say, hey, Rook, subscribe and everything. Uh, please subscribe and uh, uh, smash that bell shit stuff. You know what? I never understood why I have to tell you what you need to do as opposed to you doing it because you want to do it. That doesn't compute in my head. Um, finally, the last thing is that I, I'll, I'll apologize for the fact that the video is really something I'm creating on the side of the table right now. The production value is low because I don't have time. I'm still producing stuff like a lot. Like most of my, 90, 95% of my time is dedicated to production and uh, supporting whoever I need, the, 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 need support. Um, so in that sense, um, I'm kind of uh, trying to bring out content, but I don't have like hours on end or days on end or weeks on end to be able to sit down, make it beautiful, put some music in the back and make cuts and you know, sp it takes a lot of time to make great looking videos. So that will come probably more in 2024. Um, so that that being said, hopefully you'll forgive me and um, I'll see you soon.